Hello everyone, welcome to this Tuesday, January 17th. I'm Susan Mary Elizabeth and this is the Work Community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us on this day. Today, the church makes memory of Saint Anthony. Saint Anthony had a profound in influence on the history of monasticism. Much of what we know about Anthony comes from the biography of him written by Saint Anthony. Saint Athanasius. Anthony was born into a wealthy Christian family in Upper Egypt about 251. Both his parents died while he was a teenager. Anthony gave away his inheritance and became a hermit. After years of solitude, he emerged to gather the ascetics who had followed him into a community. This was the beginning of Christian monasticism, with Anthony's under understanding of monastic life soon taking root elsewhere. In 311, Anthony went to Alexandria to encourage the Christians there who were being persecuted. In 355, he returned to Alexandria to help his close friend, Bishop Athanasius in the struggle against Arianism. Anthony died on January 17, 356, well known for his holiness, wisdom, and asceticism. So today, may Saint Anthony the Great, not Anthony of Padua, of Lisbon, no, an ancient saint, Anthony the Great, may he pray and intercede for us and our church. First reading today, the continuation of the reading of the book of Hebrews. For our reading today is chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Let's get started with the reading of the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, God is not unjust. He will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for His sake in serving the saints, as you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. When God made a promise to Abraham, because he had no one greater by whom to spare, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and multiply you, and thus Abraham, having patiently endured, obtained the promise. Human beings, of course, swear by someone greater than themselves, and an oath given as confirmation puts an end to all dispute. In the same way, when God desired to show even more clearly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, the guarantee, he guaranteed it, by an oath, so that through two unchangeable things in which it is impossible that God would prove false, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope, a sure and a steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain, where Jesus a forerunner of our on our behalf has entered, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a rich reading! A reading that we can spend a lot of times reading, praying, and meditating with. God is not unjust. The author starts just like that. God is not unjust. So if you say, if you think, if you feel that he's unjust, he's not. He will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for his sake in serving the saints and, you, and as you still do. He's not unjust. He sees what you do. He sees your work. He sees your difficulties. He sees your heart. He sees how much before you put on everything you do. He is not unjust. But many times we feel that God 
does not know us, that he does not know what we do and so many things. But the author is saying, no, no, he's not unjust. He does not overlook your work and the love you showed. The love you show when you work for his saints. His saints means for his, for his people, for those whom he gave his life for. He's not unjust. And the author then gives us an example of Abraham. God made a promise to Abraham. God swore by himself. And Abraham obtained the promise after having patiently endured. Patient endurance. What a difficult thing to do for each one of us. We don't know how to be patient. And endurance for us is, uh, is difficult. God is asking patience of us today. To endure patiently everything that we go through. Because He is not unjust. He is just. He is faithful. And He will give us the promise, what He has promised. And how can we believe it? How can we have patient endurance by having hope have hope a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul hope is a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul something that makes you stable makes you endure patiently what comes your way we all need hope we all need the virtue of hope we all and many times we forget about this virtue. We think a lot about love and faith. We think that if we have faith, we can move mountains. Yes, of course, it is in the Bible. Jesus says that. We think if we have love, we have everything. Of course, St. Paul said that in his letters. But let us not underestimate hope. We need hope. Hope is an anchor for our soul. Hope enters the inner shrine what is this inner shrine behind the curtains? Hope goes deeper within us. This anchor that goes to the bottom of the ocean. That goes there where no one can go. And think the cross of Jesus and says, I will hope. I will wait for him. Jesus taught us hope. To hope in our Father. So based on this reading... Where are you lacking hope? First of all, are you lacking hope in any sh way, shape or form? Where are you being hopeless? And where is God calling you to be hopeful? The responsorial psalm today is Psalm 111, 111. I give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation, Great are the words of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He sent redemption to his people. He has commended his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. And the gospel today is from St. Mark, chapter 2, verses 23 to 28. On Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples were going through the grain fields. And as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The disciples said to him, Look, what are they doing, doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for people and not people for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. What does it mean to be Lord over the Sabbath? 
The Sabbath was a day to rest, a day to honor God, to do not do any heavy work, a day that you would endure, that you would spend praising God. But many people took advantage to say that I will not do good on this day. I will not help others on this day. But Jesus is saying, no, the law, the commandments, the rules that were that was given to us, they were meant to serve us, not us to serve it. Every time that we are presented with a rule, like for me, a religious sister, that have rules to follow in a community, or you have rules in your school, in your work, in your family, the rules are not to oppress us, to make us slaves. But a rule is to give us direction, to bring us life. And Jesus makes um, a point here. David, in the Old Testament, David wasn't a priest. So he plucked the grains with his disciples to eat because they were hungry. And Jesus said, did David was wrong. They would never have the courage to say that David was wrong because David was David, King David. Jesus showed here that David used the law to serve good, to serve life, not to oppress anyone. Hope brings us this new look towards the law. A look that says this rule, this guide, this guidance is given to bring me life, not to oppress me or to kill me. May the Lord give us this grace today to see all the rules that we need to obey, that we need to follow as helpers to bring us life, more life, life to the full. May the Lord bless us on this day and bring us His hope, a hope that gives us new sight. Amen.